Hi, I'm Colleen and welcome back to my sewing room. I thought it'd be great today to talk a little bit about how I work in my sewing room given the fact that I have some physical limitations. So my story is that uh, in March of 2018 I was in a terrible taxi accident and everything's okay in the end but I was left with whiplash and um, I've got five bulging discs in my neck now. I had a sternum injury. It really affected my neck and my upper back. And I found that even after the pain from the accident itself had subsided, I still struggle to sew. I struggle to do the things I love to do because I have a lot of residual pain and limitations in my neck and my back. And that's even with chiropractic care and physical therapy and time. So I didn't sew for a long time because I simply couldn't. And it's heartbreaking when you have something that you really love to do, to not be able to do it or not be able to do it in the same way you once did, it can be heartbreaking. So, um, you know, I languished with that for a while. And then not even a year later, I injured my left wrist. I injured it badly enough that I have now had two surgeries on it and it's never gonna be the same. I will never probably have full range of motion again. I'll probably never be without pain again. So between my neck and my back and my wrist, you know, how in the world can I sew? I used to sew for hours and hours at a time. I love nothing more than to spend a day in my sewing room. And in fact, I had uh, a little, I don't know, business, I guess you could call it, but I did fundraisers for a friend of mine who was a missionary in Haiti, and I would sew products for craft fairs, or I would teach sewing lessons, or take on commissions for people, and all of the money I earned went to Haiti to help support that ministry. And that just can't happen anymore. I can't, I just can't sew like that anymore. Um, so, you know, I've got a sewing room full of fabric and supplies and I was going to embark on historical costuming and all kinds of stuff and I had lots of plans and they just have been on hold since March of 2018. So um, eventually though, I did decide that, you know, hey, if this is the new reality, if these things, my wrist and my neck are not going to fully heal, I would like to find a way to get back into the sewing room. And there are a couple of things that I'm doing. Um, to sort of modify how I work, but also, you know, this YouTube channel is one of those things. I can't sew for long stretches, but I did find that, you know, setting up a camera in between shots gives my neck and my hand a break and slows me down just a little bit. And yet I still have the creative process of, of filming and, you know, telling a story and having my projects and being able to share my creativity with people. So whether anybody watches it or not really doesn't matter. It just is a matter of me being able to be creative in a new way. So I guess my first tip would be, if you can't sew like you once did, can you find another skill that is a companion to your sewing? So for example, for me, it's going to be filming. Um, I decided it was time to learn how to film and edit videos and, you know, tell a story through a different medium. And I can use that along with my sewing to still be creative, but at the pace that I'm able to actually be creative. But for, for you, maybe that is, okay, I can't sew quite the way I once used to, so maybe I need to try some different projects. Or maybe I could try embroidery where I can't necessarily do other kinds of sewing or maybe I switch to hand sewing instead of machine sewing like there's a lot of different things you could do um, to allow you to continue to be creative in the hobby that you once really enjoyed. Another thing I did while I was recovering because my second surgery happened right along with the pandemic is I thought well I could still be creative I have this room full of fabric and I really can't sew but maybe I can find a way to jump onto the um, you know recreating famous artwork trend that happened for a while uh, that was a lot of fun for me because it, it enabled me to be creative without sewing anything I was able to just take fabric that I already had and drape it in a certain way. I enlisted my kids to help me. Uh, I learned how to edit photos, which was something I hadn't really done before. And it was just a lot of fun. It was just a, a creative outlet at a time when I couldn't sew a stitch. And so that's another thing that, you know, again, when we look at different skills that you can add to your hobby, um, sometimes you just jump to a different thing altogether and use your supplies in a completely different way. I do have a few more tips I'd like to share with you, so come along with me as we look around my sewing room. I find having grippers on my rulers to be really helpful. Um, they were helpful before I had a wrist injury, but they're even more helpful now because you can put them on your ruler and it keeps your ruler from sliding on the fabric. So for example, 
This ruler doesn't have it on there right now. If I put it on here, you can see that it slides all over the place. And if I wanted to cut, I would need to hold this very tightly with this hand and cut with this hand. But the problem is, I can't do that with this wrist. My injury doesn't allow me to put the amount of pressure on the ruler that I need to for accurate cutting. So here are two products that are helpful. One is called Invisigrip, and uh, this is basically, um, it's made by OmniGrip, but it's a sheet of sort of grippy, clear material, and you cut it to the size that you need. You place it on the back of your ruler, and it's clear, so you can see through it, but it just has a little bit of a grip that enables you to then place your ruler down, and then I can just use some fingertips to hold it in place instead of having to put a bunch of pressure on there. This is another product that is equally helpful. It's made by Tritz, and it's essentially the same material. It's just in these little round dots, and so you can put a dot in each corner of your ruler and achieve the same result of having something that doesn't slip and slide on you. So I'm actually gonna show how these get applied now, and you can see the difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. I'm going to peel and stick them right in the corners of my ruler. And because they're clear, you can see all the markings right through them. And they'll just keep it from slipping and sliding. So now, if I flip this over and place it, you can see it doesn't slide like it did before. I can't, even if I wanted to, if I started to slide it, it slides the fabric itself. So now I can place that right where I need to put a couple fingers here to steady it and then cut right along this side and it won't shove that off the fabric or make it slip and slide around. This is the latest addition to my sewing room and it's called a sewing bird or a sewing clamp. You can also um, see it listed as a third hand. Let me show you how this works. If I were to want to hand sew a hem, for example, like this piece here, I've just done a sample in dark fabric and contrasting threads so you can see. I would need to put tension on that fabric somehow in order to make those stitches. I'm right-handed, so I would need to hold it with my left hand and stitch with my right. Now the way I would normally do that is pinch it between my index finger and my middle finger here, and then hold it with my thumb and my other fingers down below, and then I would stretch it with this hand. Stretch it like this and have tension on that fabric. So the problem is I've had, you know, a lot of surgery on this left hand and I can't do this for very long. So I already have some pain kicking in um, and, you know, I would have to stop this maybe after six or eight inches, take a break, start again. And that's really frustrating when you have a, um, a project that you just really enjoy working on. You don't want to have to stop every few minutes because you're in pain. But I can't not have tension on here while I'm sewing. So what is a solution? That's where the sewing bird comes in handy. So there's the eye bolt here and a C-clamp, and I clamp it to the edge of my cutting table, or you can do a desk or, you know, whatever you happen to have. This loops around that bolt, and then this is the clamp. So what I can do is clamp the end of my work in the sewing bird, and then that lets me hold this in a much more comfortable fashion. So I don't have to spread my fingers apart or hold or maintain all that tension with my hand. I get the benefit of the sewing bird uh, for at least one of those pieces. And see how I'm, I'm able to hold it much more naturally here. Uh, and it's actually a lot less painful for me to do that. So now I can continue to sew with the help of the sewing bird. So is it perfect? No. Is it as steady as my hand? No. But is it helpful for me to be able to continue doing the hobby I enjoy without pain? Yes, actually it is. So I'll take it. As imperfect as it is, if it lets me continue to sew, then I will use it. This little gadget was just a few dollars on Amazon, so I highly recommend picking up one if being able to grip and hold is one of your issues. Here's another way I've modified my sewing room to make it more comfortable for me to sew um, with my neck injuries. So using a sewing machine is not the most ergonomic thing in the world. I mean, if you want to sew for a really long period of time, you know, it's really common to get a little bit of soreness up in your shoulders and your neck. And I think part of that is because you do tend to like look down 
but then sort of crane your neck forward to see underneath where the needle and the bobbin and the presser foot are on your sewing machine. And so after my accident, I really couldn't do that. I mean, it was just instant pain, instant um, tingling in my neck, you know, with, from the nerve damage and stuff like that. And it was just really uncomfortable. So I couldn't sew for more than a few minutes at a time. And as you know, with any kind of sewing project, especially a more complex one, sometimes a single step can take an hour. If you're hemming a long hem or you're sewing some long seams or you're creating, you know, like a home decor item, a drape, or a slip cover or something like that, you need to be able to complete a step at a time and sometimes those steps take a while. So I thought, well, I don't know how to solve that problem. And then it came to me that probably the best thing I could do would be to raise my sewing machine up. So I looked around online to see what I could find and I came up with these, these two little glass tables and they came as a set. They're essentially, you know, something that you would put underneath your computer monitor on your desk or something like that. I'll put a link in the description box below. Um, but they are two glass tables with metal feet and you can adjust the metal feet to make two of them higher than the other so you could put it on an angle if you wanted to. But I found that just raising it up this little bit, I mean it's it's not more than a few inches, right? Maybe three three inches. Um, off of, the, off of the table made a huge difference in my ability to sew without pain. So um, I put these in a couple months ago and I've been really, really, really pleased with them. And the fact that they're glass means that they're nice and sturdy. They're not going to wobble or fall apart on me. Um, my sewing machine actually fits on one and the other is really easy to move if I needed to. So I could like move it out here if I needed an extra place to support my, my work or I could slide it in if I want to. Um, an added benefit is that I have room now under the table so I can slide my pins under there, my scissors, whatever tools I need to have handy, I can actually slide them out of the way while I'm sewing. Um, anyway, this has made a huge difference, just a huge difference in the angle at which I sit and sew. If you have neck and back problems, I would absolutely recommend um, getting a little table like this to raise your work up off of your sewing table. I bought this Taylor's ham quite some time ago at a thrift store and it's come in really handy. If you've sewn for any length of time, you know it can be really tough to iron a curved seam, um, like for example uh, a dart in a bodice or the curve of a collar or a sleeve. Um, it, it's hard to iron that flat on an ironing board. So a Taylor's ham is really great for allowing you to manipulate the fabric over the curve. This thing really came in handy when everybody was told to start wearing masks back in what March of last year but I had just had surgery in February and I had my hand in a cast so I was like well I can probably manage to stitch a, a mask or two if I have help from my family for the cutting and the pinning but how in the world are we gonna iron that curved seam that comes down the front of the mask well this is great except that you really do need to have one hand to hold it and another hand to iron so I looked into Taylor's ham holders and they can be really expensive, you know, 40 or $50 for them. Uh, a lot of people will make them out of wood and sell them. They're, they're beautiful, but they're expensive. And I was just looking for a really simple, easy solution. So you want to know what it is? A football tee. A football tee costs about 4 or $5 and it's perfect for holding a Taylor's ham. Absolutely perfect. So I can set this right in there and it holds it steady and so I was able with one hand and maybe a little bit of a thumb to stretch my masks over the edge of this ham and then iron them. So I really can't say enough about this wonderful hack. I mean not only does it save money but it is helpful to um, un enable you to do the tasks that you need to do that would normally take two hands but maybe you don't have two hands to do it with. So this holds that ham steady and and lets you free up your other hand. You can do it this way as well. So if you need to use this end, you can set it in there. And you see that's not going anywhere. It's nice and sturdy. Um, I'm a huge fan of this. So here's another way you can set it in like that. There's a lot of ways to use this little tee. And really, I mean, just a few dollars compared to 40 or $50 that I was seeing for Taylor's ham holders online. So. I'm really excited to show you this one. This is just a bed riser and they're really popular especially around back to school time. College students will buy them to put their dorm beds up a little higher and that gives them room to put storage underneath. Um, but 
I love this for my sewing table. Now this is just a table I bought secondhand, um, but it's a little too short. And if you've ever sewn over a dining room table or worked on projects for a long time where you're standing over a dining room table, you'll know it can get really uncomfortable. It's just a little bit too low. So bed risers give you the extra six or eight inches that make it more comfortable to work for longer periods of time. I'm not that tall, I'm five foot six, but even so I would struggle to work for very long over a regular dining room height table. Um, and this just gives me the added height I need, which is especially important since I've had neck and back issues because of the accident. Um, I still have a good ergonomic height for my workspace. Another great tip, get a kitchen mat. You can put this under your feet so that while you're standing and cutting out or patterning or working on a project at your table, you have some extra cushion under your feet. This came from Aldi and I think it was about $15, but it's, you know, maybe three-fourths of an inch thick and just gives me some added comfort while I'm working. I work in a basement sewing room. I have a concrete floor and this gives me some added padding to make it, again, easier on my back and my feet while I'm working. This is another really great tool to have in your sewing room. It's a repurposed kitchen cookbook holder. It's made out of cast iron, it's real sturdy, and it's meant to hold cookbooks while you cook, but the same concept applies to your sewing room. So I can hold a sewing book here and be able to reference it while I work. Uh, it kind of keeps it up and out of the way, and it's just easier than hanging your head over something that's lay, laying flat on your work surface, and then having to you know put your head over it and look back up, and put your head back over it and look back up. This way, it's all right, right up at eye level, and you can just reference it as you need to. So this is the 18th century dressmaking book from American Duchess, which I can't wait to dive into. And then here's another project I'm looking forward to doing. It's the 1910s wrap cape from American Duchess. You see, you can just put your pattern or your instructions right in this cookbook holder, and it's handy. So that's it for this video. Um, a little bit about my channel. I am basically learning as I go, so you'll see that I'm, I'm getting a little bit better, I think, in the lighting in here. I have a basement sewing room without a window, so there's no source of natural light in here. Um, and so I'm still trying to figure out things like lighting and sound and editing, but my, my goal is to come up with one new skill for every video, at least one new skill for every video. So hopefully I can publish something a couple times a month, but uh, I really don't have any set goal. I'm just going to use this as a learning opportunity and I'm taking all of you along with me. So all, all five of you at this point. <laughs> so uh, anyway, thanks for joining me. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions, put a comment down below. So thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next time.